The weather is always nice, and today is no exception on the peninsula. But there are more substantive reasons. As provost of Johns Hopkins University, I became a student of research universities. These magnificently, magnificently complex, sometimes chaotic organizations that through their research, teaching, and service missions are doing so much to change the world for the better. For all their complexity, though, the organization of research universities appears straightforward compared to the challenges of aligning missions and incentives within an academic medical center and of managing the relationship between academic medical centers and their parent universities. I was convinced, and being here these past nine months has only strengthened my conclusion, that Stanford is better poised than any place else to leverage the unique opportunities that come from being an academic medical center that is on the campus of a truly remarkable research university. We at Stanford Medicine share with our parent university not just a name and a campus, but our unique emphasis on quality, innovation, and collaboration. Because of these qualities, I believe we here at Stanford Medicine are uniquely poised to lead the biomedical revolution. We are motivated to solve only the most difficult problems, and we approach these problems through the eyes of innovators. Working across traditional boundaries, we skip incremental change to develop instead the new platforms and paradigms that will change the way we see the world. All these reasons for making the move have been borne out time and time again since I arrived, and never has there been any reason to question the conclusion that we are all doing remarkable things and that we're so well poised to be preeminent. But as logical and as rational as this analysis of my decision making, it doesn't really provide the full picture of why I decided to move nearly 3,000 miles from Baltimore to Palo Alto, leaving friends and colleagues and a wonderful job to accept this amazing offer to lead Stanford Medicine. Perhaps the best explanation comes from the inscription on a box that sits on my desk a gift from my wife when I moved from being chair of the Department of Otolaryngology at Johns Hopkins to being the provost of the university. It's a quote from Lord Chesterfield, and it reads, in order to discover new oceans, you have to have the courage to lose sight of the shore. For you see, there's an explorer within each of us. That explorer appears at different times in our lives and shows up in different ways for different people. You've all experienced it. You made the decision to go to medical school or graduate school or both. You came to Stanford and you made choices about your areas of research focus, your residency, and your plans for where you will be and what you will be doing. In fact, that explorer within each of you has guided you well because by any metric or standard, you are among the most successful people on the planet. happen with time is that that explorer takes a back seat and it may need to manifest itself differently at different stages of your life and career. In fact, you just passed through a period of enormous exploration and many of you will settle into a pathway that may seem to be a bit more planned and predictable. And that's not a bad thing. Your lives will grow in other ways, in your careers, in your relationships, in your families but the explorer will always be there. And when brought to the fore at the appropriate time, that explorer is going to enable your lives to have meaning and impact in ways that we can't even fathom today. Sometimes you have to leave something good to find something even better. My wish for each of you is that you will always have the drive to discover new oceans and that you will always have the courage to lose sight of the shore. In closing, I can't help but leave you with a little bit of other advice. Wherever you go next, may you find the strength in failure. May you see every problem as an opportunity, and may you always remain true to yourself and your values. Congratulations and best wishes.
Please welcome our first student speaker, receiving his doctorate in chemical and systems biology, Malsu Sadagiani. Thank you, Dean. Um, welcome to Stanford University School of Medicine, everybody. Um, as I was just walking to the podium, I actually panicked a little bit because it is kind of intimidating to be after the Dean of the School of Medicine and for Brian Kovilkov, who is a Nobel Prize winner. So at any time point, if I freeze, it's not because I'm gathering my thoughts. It's probably because I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> but then again, we have a well-qualified group of physicians and doctors to my right who will come to rescue me. Let me start by thanking the Dean's Office, staff, associate deans, everybody who made this process possible. Without them, students like myself would be lost here day after day. I particularly want to thank Dean Pizzo, our previous dean, whose policies and programs have transformed the School of Medicine over the past decade, most of which I have been here and witnessed, by the way. Uh, I want to give a shout out to our new dean, Dean Lloyd Miner, who just spoke, whose vision I'm pretty sure is going to change the whole School of Medicine again. Uh, I also want to thank Professor Hirschlag, the Senior Associate Dean of Student Affairs, not only for his hard work uh, over the past several months as a dean and, and over the past several years, but also for not wearing a t-shirt, a yellow hoodie, or a biking outfit to this event and making us all very important. Students and everybody else, come to this campus to do a job that could not be done as well as it is if it wasn't because of their hard work and their dedication. Students, staff, faculty, researchers, clinicians come to do this important job day after day, month after month, year after year, and for some graduate students, decades after decades. <laughs> but as people in the field of cell cycle would remind you, just because something repeats itself, it doesn't make it less important. This very ceremony happens every year where these graduates sitting in these seats are more determined, more passionate, and more empowered to go out there and do things even better and bigger than ever before. I want to thank you all uh, on behalf of the graduate student body and School of Medicine. I want to thank you all for being here today. But I particularly want to thank the parents and the families of the students whose lifelong dedication and deep pockets have allowed students to make this students like myself to be as persistent, as hardworking, as passionate, but also as talented, as smart, as accomplished, as stylish, and so on. <laughs> but joking aside, I do want to thank the parents and the families uh, who have inspired these students to come to work every day to approach and tackle challenging problems that have been proven to be difficult to solve over and over. They come and do this job, I'm pretty sure, without any hesitation or any fear of failure. I should also mention that we have come a long way, um, not only as a society, but also as a fine medical society. If a kid like myself, who didn't speak a word of English 15 years ago, and literally looked up when he was asked what's up in high school, gets the opportunity <laughs> and resources to come through the educational system and stand before you today among such an accomplished group of individuals, then we have come a long way. If half If half, almost half, of this graduating class is composed of women in science and medicine, then we have come a long way. And if, and none of it would have been possible if it wasn't because of the strong commitment of such graduates to diversity and excellence. We have come a long way, but we have a long way to go. Well, I have to admit, unfortunately, I have to admit, that the good, bad, and ugly of the world, including devastating conditions like cancer, diabetes, heart disease, autism, and many others, along with difficulties and obstacles like poverty and hunger, are elements that we have to accept as part of our lives in the world today, tomorrow. I can guarantee you, on behalf of this student body, that tomorrow and every day after that will be a new day where these very graduates will fight as hard as they can, not only to cure conditions like cancer and diabetes, not only to try to address socioeconomical issues like poverty and hunger around the world, but they will fight as hard as they can to enhance the quality of life for every individual on this planet and they will not come a step short from it. <laughs> that being said, I would like to remind myself and my fellow graduates that success and accomplishments, they come with joy, glory, and sometimes happiness.
but they also come with responsibilities. No matter if you graduate today, tomorrow, next year, or never, the bottom line of what we learn at this institution is to think big, change the world, simply because you can and never ever stop doing it. And lastly, if I have learned anything from my endeavors over the past several years here, is to, to celebrate small successes, cherish every moment when you're in them, don't regret the past, and do not over plan the future. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the class of 2013 on their outstanding accomplishments. I want to thank the faculty for providing the opportunities and resources that allow students like myself to be who we are. And I want to thank you all for being here. It has been a pleasure of mine to have been part of this process. It's been an honor to have been the speaker on behalf of the graduate student body. Thank you all very much. Please welcome our medical student speaker, Long Nguyen. <laughs> Long matched here in his, for his residency in internal medicine, so we won't be saying completely goodbye to him today. Long?